This is ClueCon Weekly, the official Free Switch web show produced and broadcasted directly from Free Switch. ClueCon Weekly features live updates from the Free Switch developers and presentations from various pioneers of communications technology. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions, the official consulting firm of the Free Switch Open Source Project. Get help from the experts. Visit freeswitch.com. ClueCon, the premier technology conference for telecom, WebRTC, IoT, and all things maker. ClueCon is held every year in Chicago, Illinois, and offers an all-day hackathon and four days of technology-rich presentations from developers around the world. Learn more at ClueCon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. All right, everybody. Welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Today is the 20th of September, 2017. And today we're going to have Mr. David Duffett from uh, the Astros Project and Digium joining us. And uh, he's got a bunch of fun stuff that he wants to talk about today. So we're going to, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the free switch world. So you guys check out freeswitch.org. You can find out everything there. Don't forget to follow us on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, you guys can find us all there. And so we're going to jump right in and get David on here. David, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks, Ken. How about you? Ah, doing all right. So uh, if I understand it right, you're joining us all the way from uh, the UK today. I am here in the UK, that's right, the Queen says hi, uh, and uh, we're loving being on here already. Hi, cool, well thanks for joining us today. Uh, so, I, if I understand correctly, you guys have uh, uh, a large event coming up here very shortly? We, we sure do, but before we get on to that, I uh, just want to say thank you for uh, having me over at ClueCon, enjoyed that uh, a few weeks ago, back in Chicago, it was a great time. And uh, I guess the other thing to say, and I know we, we do say this every now and again, but uh, just in case people have been living under rocks, uh, it, it would be just uh, nice to remind everybody uh, about the love that there is between the Free Switch guys and the Asterisk guys. Because some people don't think there's any love. But, Ken, is there love? Oh, come on, man. It's, uh, uh, I think uh, everybody that works on Free Switch, you know, the core team used to, everybody knows everybody while we're at Asterisk, uh, especially guys that have been around forever. Um, in fact, uh, uh, you know, Digium, they have their world headquarters in that nice big building there in uh, the research park in uh, Huntsville. And I did that mark before they even moved into that building. So he's a good guy. Um, in fact, uh, rode from the airport to the first ClueCon with Mark, uh, Mark Spencer. So, uh, got, uh, you know, so long time. We know a lot of people down there. And it's always great to get you guys on the show or see you at ClueCon. And, yeah, uh, I think, uh, we're sending a few folks to visit with y'all in, in a week or two. That, that's right. We were grateful to be at ClueCon, and we're uh, very pleased to have you all along to Astricon coming up in Orlando. Uh, it's still fully functional down there. Uh, in fact, the hotel that we are using, the Omni Champions Gate, stayed open throughout the storms, and because it wasn't affected as badly as some other places, they were able to give help and shelter to people that needed it. Uh, and so we're, we're pleased that we're bringing astricon down there to give them some income and to get things back to normal for them yeah that sounds that sounds really good so um um how much uh did that give you guys any trouble getting ready for astricon or leading up to no it? not that i know of i mean we had the odd email from people saying you know is everything all, all still uh, all systems go and and it is we're, we're fully on there and mercifully um as the uh the hurricane went up it kind of went on the inside around the Gulf Coast and kind of missed off Orlando uh, from any kind of major trouble. So, yeah, it worked well. All right, cool, cool. So uh, so I know Astrocon, uh, how, how long is it till Astrocon? I mean, it's uh, Astrocon this year is October 3rd to the 5th. So we're, we're just about just less than two weeks. This time in two weeks' time, we'll actually be uh, halfway through it, or well, a good halfway through. <laughs> cool. So... Uh, when do you actually leave out to head to Astrocon? So I'm going to be heading out on the 30th of September. That's the Saturday ahead of time. I like to get out there, even though the main event doesn't really start until the Tuesday, which is what we used to call the pre-con day, but really it's kind of merged into one. So Astrocon is really a, a three-day event from the 3rd to the 5th. Uh, and I, as I said, I get out there a little bit early. Um, it helps that uh, if you leave from the UK and spend a Saturday night, over in the States, the airline tickets way down in price. <laughs> but it's, a, it's also good for me to get out there ahead of time, make sure everything's all right. I've got a kind of a, a standard list of kit that I take 
and always make sure I've got a car on hand so we can fly anything around that needs doing at the last minute. So what's the what's the big thing coming up at Astrocon this year? Well, I guess the, the overarching theme or, or the, the collection of words we, we've been using around Astrocon this year is open source, open mind. Because uh, although it's for many years been the main asterisk event of the year, and of course it still is, um, this year we've got more open source projects aside from asterisk. Of course, notably, free switch is one of them. We've also got um, open sips, uh, Camelio, Camelio, and the Homer project are all going to be there. I think Freeside is represented as well. So that that kind of whole openness and uh, open source communications flavour. Uh, is very big. Um, in terms of actual themes in t- uh, in the talks, it's quite a wide range. Of course, WebRTC is still present, but some of the kind of excitement and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't think of it right now. But the kind of overreaction to it has died down a little bit. It's still there. People are still using it. Um, but there will be some WebRTC talks. But uh, just, just as much, people like talking about... Um, building larger, more scalable, more redundant and resilient systems. And so there'll be talks about Asterisk and Camelio and Asterisk and Open Sips and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, from a deployment point of view, people like getting into things like Docker and Kubernetes and all of that. So, that, you know, there's multiple strands to it. And in fact, I guess it's really like happens at ClueCon as well. People come up with all sorts of different aspects. Yeah, you never know what you're going to run into. <laughs> at the That's conference. right. And, uh, That's right. I've just had the proof of the show guide through today, and, and we've got uh, five tracks running all about asterisk in different dimensions. Um, we've got uh, a couple of great keynoters that I can talk to uh, talk about in a moment. Um, but, of course, we've got this major league, the heavy hitters panel, uh, with Tony from FreeSwitch, Matt from Asterisk, uh, we've got Bob Dan from OpenSips, Daniel from Camilio. And, uh, of course, Lorenzo from the Homer Project. Never have those five people been gathered together in one place before. Never never mind actually been on a panel session. So we're very excited about that. Cool, cool. So I know, uh, you know, we're going to have, uh, uh, you mentioned it there, we're going to have Mike, Brian, and Tony, the, the core of the Free Switch team, plus uh, Kathleen coming down to visit them. Yeah. And, let, and let's not forget Sharon. Oh, yes, and Sharon. Who uh, who can forget Sharon? Because we can't you can't agree without Sharon. <laughs> oh. oh. You can Skype there, Kat. Somebody just does not know how to leave Skype alone. Um. <laughs> this happens on a regular basis, and it's always women, isn't it, Ken? Uh, you never know what's going on uh, for whatever reason. And Windows has decided to not tell you how to turn off Skype anymore because they want integrated in there oh, okay yeah i'm just coming back to um tony and brian we're very pleased to have them they'll be running a session so as well as the panel we've got a free switch session at uh, astricon this year and that's tony and brian doing that and then uh, tony's going to be in on that panel and of course we have a thing called the open source showcase so on the expo expo floor although we've got a lot of commercial companies that are there um from the asterisk ecosystem we always try and make space for other open source projects. And this year, we've got more than ever. I believe we're going to have nine tables in the open source showcase. And, of course, you guys are going to be on one of those. So we're looking forward to that. So, uh, uh, yeah, so sorry. Um, so what um, what are you going to be showing off at Astrocon this year, David? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Um, certainly one of the talks that's by the developer team this year is going to be about video and asterisk 15, which will be the kind of, it's out there as a beta already, I believe, uh, 15. And it's the first time we've, we've um, spent as much time as we have uh, going into video. Now, I can't tell you too much about it, and, and it's not because I can't tell you because I can't tell you. It's because I can't tell you because I don't know. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that talk as well. Uh, a couple of the developers, it'll be Josh Culp and Kevin Harwell who are going to be talking about video in Asterisk 15. What we do know uh, is they've kind of gone down the SFU direction. Uh, I think that's uh, known. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what, what the kind of things that they have to say. Right. And so uh, for folks that are wondering in SFU, 
Um, what's the difference between that and say like an MCU? Real quick? I, you know, I knew you were going to ask me that, uh, Ken. So if you if you'll forgive my humble explanation and then maybe fill in some of the gaps afterwards, I'd be pleased. So uh, an MCU is a, a multi-party conference unit that actually conglomerates all of the video in a central place and then that unit can render it up as it wants to do so it can put all the different faces in the different boxes uh, for one of a better expression whereas an SFU um, I believe sends individual video feeds out to every endpoint from every endpoint leaving the endpoint to do the work of the rendering. Now, I know that's not a brilliant explanation, so I'd better let you carry on from that. That is actually a brilliant explanation. You, you uh, it. Okay. I knew the answer, and uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of people don't. And so that, that's uh, so FreeSwitch uses the MCU model, so Asterisk went with the SFU model. So it'll be real interesting to see, you know, at the end of the day how that all plays out in the uh, in the mid and, and long term. Because there's yeah. definitely, uh, you know, reasons for doing it one way and reasons for doing it the other. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not privy to uh, why the dev team went uh, in that direction, but I'm sure uh, some of that will be explained in the talk that they do. Um, of course, the other thing that we've got uh, Astricon in common with Clucon is the dangerous demo sessions uh, done by legendary Brit, James Bodie. He will be there, and uh, that, that's an hour and a half long session this time on the last day, just ahead of the wrap-up talk, which is where the Asterisk dev team, um, in fact, I think this year represented by Matt Fredrickson and maybe one or two others, will kind of close up by talking about uh, the future direction of Asterisk. Because, uh, as you probably know, Ken, being an old hand, around Astricon we also have a thing called Astri DevCon, uh, where the developers get together, not just uh, those from the Digium team, but the open source community as well. They all gather around the same table. Last year, I think we had about 60 people at that. And that used to happen at the end of Astricon, after everybody had gone home. But now we do it at the front end, and so that kind of informs the talk about the future direction of Asterisk that happens at the back end of Astricon. So it kind of all fits in nicely. Yeah, so yeah, so the research team does something similar to that. We just do it at a different time, so we kind of know <laughs> what we're doing for the next year. But right. uh, that's actually really good to have that uh, because you get all the different stakeholders in and uh, you know can come up with a good game plan for that. So uh, that, uh, that yeah, exactly. Um, so I know uh, I know you got three days there. Did I hear you say five tracks? Yeah, first first time we've had five tracks. We did have four tracks last year, and um, I I don't know whether you remember from last year, but we also had a, a kind of a track that went along uh, its own lines called Free PBX World. The Free PBX guys had a track. Um, this year, they didn't have that track, and so I capitalized on the opportunity to use that capacity, and so we've got five tracks fully devoted to all things asterisk. Would you like to hear what they are called, Ken? Yes, I would, and, and I've got a question. Do they all run concurrently? They do all run concurrently. That's right, and when here's, here's how um, I know that I've done my job well, because I'm, I'm editorially responsible for Astricon in terms of putting the, the sessions and the tracks together. So when I hear people um, maybe uh, cussing just a little bit because there's three different talks they want to go to at the same time, I know that I've put on a good schedule. Um, that's, how, that's how I measure it, or maybe four or five. But those five tracks, uh, one of them is called Business, and it's simply about people that are building businesses around Asterisk and the Asterisk ecosystem. So there's talks as diverse in that one from case studies on how people have implemented Asterisk uh, business level to how to um, build your business around Asterisk. There's even a talk about effective communications in the workplace in that track because uh, I'm sure you've worked in a few comms companies, Ken, and how often have you heard people say, you know, for a comms company, we don't communicate very well. So if we thought we'd have a talk about that in there, effective communications, um, and there's sales help and all sorts of things. So that's the business track. Then there's a track called deployment. That's especially for people that want to talk about containerization and, uh, you know, Docker and different things that they might want to do in deployment. There's one called infrastructure, uh, where that goes deep into SIP infrastructure. There'll probably be some WebRTC. And also that's where the open SIPs talks and uh, the Camelio talks would be. Um, so where are we? We've got business. 
we've got uh, infrastructure and deployment, and then we've got two developer tracks because there were so many developer submissions. One is just called developer, and the other one's called developer extra. And uh, it's the developer track, of course, that one uh, Brian and Tony Free Switch Talk will be in. And what, what's the difference between developer and developer extra? Is that, there isn't really. I could have called them developer one and developer two, but I just wanted to be add a little bit more excitement to it, Ken. <laughs> so it's not one for like entry level guys, and then one for like crazy advanced guys. No, indeed. In fact, if, if people want to visit the website to see the schedule, um, it's at Astricon two zero one seven. So asterisk, Astricon twenty seventeen dot sketch which is S-C-H-E-D, which looks like shed to me, but apparently I've been told American pr people pronounce it sketch, uh, dot com. And if people go to astricon2017 dot, dot sketch dot com, um, they will be able to see all of those talks. And just to come back to your point, they are each identified as to whether they're kind of beginner level, intermediate, expert level. So uh, people can make their choices based on those kind of uh, meta tags, if you like. Cool. And and for you guys trying to catch that URL from uh, from David, we'll put that down below the the, uh, the video in the show notes, so you guys can catch that later. Down below, yeah. Down below, right there by the subscribe button that you want to click too. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of down below, can I'd like to thank you for my little asterisk logo there on the the uh, screen. Very impressed with that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, no, no, no. It's great to get you guys in here. So, I mean, come on. Look, we got Astrocon 2016 uh, swag behind you. So I, have, you I, got a few, I got a few of the signs because the thing is, you see, I am an asterisk and Astrocon enthusiast. You know, although I do it kind of as a job, I, I, you know, I like all this stuff. And so when the show's over, I, I kind of pick up the signs and see what I can fit on the aeroplane on my way home. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, 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 I just remembered, I have a little story to tell you about that. Last time we were in Florida, which was a couple of years ago, uh, we were at a property within the Universal Studios complex. It was the hotel within that. And things were a little bit spread out. And so we actually had stickers on the sidewalks telling people where to go. You know, they were proper industrial stickers. Anyway, we must have had a few asterisk fanboys in because some people unpeeled those and stole those stickers before the show was even finished, they were on it, Ken. <laughs> I I can believe that because I know um, we a couple of years ago we actually don't you know, all the banners and stuff that that we collect up for Klucon, uh, you know, they, those things hang around forever and a day as far, as well do the T-shirts and uh, and I know uh, we have to sort through those things on occasion to see okay what what goes back and what just stays here in the secret stash so i mean collecting up uh you know banners posters that kind of thing uh, is crazy and and I'll, uh even on the t-shirts man people collect those things and i that's, think that's right I, I know of at least one person that's got a t-shirt from every astrocon up on their wall uh, i've uh, got a shirt from every clue con um except for one um, that i wasn't able to uh, make it to that year and we've actually had uh, we actually got we actually get requests for uh, retro shirts, I guess you could say, uh, you know, from previous years. Uh, I want that shirt, please. Yeah. Can I get it? And uh, it's like uh, sometimes we have them, sometimes yeah, they're all gone. Uh, yes, because, you know, <laughs> you can't get them. <laughs> so yeah, in, in, in fact, more than once the idea has been discussed of actually having like a, a swag kind of uh, pop-up little market stand at Astricon because, you know, people very often come, they've got their T-shirt as part of the deal, but then they say, oh, can I get another T-shirt for a colleague? You know, I'll pay for it. Uh, and uh, more than once that idea has been discussed. I don't think we're going to have that this year, but you never know. Never can tell on that stuff. So I know um, one of the things that we haven't talked about on your schedule yet, uh, keynotes. Who do you have for keynotes this year? Ah, okay, yeah. Let, let me uh, uh, wheel those along. So on the Wednesday, which is our first keynote, the, the conference starts off on the Tuesday, and there's a few newbie sessions, kind of introductions to Asterisk. There's also, actually, I, I should mention one other thing, and there's a special workshop, which is four sessions long, from Life Madsen and Doug Smith, who are both heavily involved in the Red Hat project, and they're talking about Asterisk as an NFV and an NVF. 
So uh, four session workshop about that on the Tuesday, but then coming to the keynotes, the first one is on the Wednesday, and that's a guy called Dean Bubbly. Uh, I don't know whether you've come across Dean. He's UK based and he's kind of an industry analyst, sort of commentator type guy, and he'll be kind of looking towards the future. Um, but he's very often finding himself in a contrarian position, arguing against some of the received wisdom and things like that. So the title of his talk is about the future of Asterisk, but also with a kind of a sideways glance at what he believes is overhyped, looking towards the future of communications as well. So that's on the Wednesday. Uh, and then on the Thursday, we've got a community member who I'm sure you all have come across on your travels, Ken, a guy called Brian Capuch. He's been involved in the Asterisk project a long old time, and his keynote is called Asterisk and Me, a Telephony Love Story. <laughs> yeah, Brian's actually uh, a really good guy. He goes way back in open source. In fact, uh, I, prob uh, I know he's been working in open source probably close to 20 years now. So yeah, yeah, he's a very much an open source advocate and enthusiast. And as, as the community director for the Asterisk Project, one of the things I try and uh, look to do in Astricon is not only provide technical uh, content, but also community content as well. And so if you wanted to look at it this way, um, Dean is kind of doing that forward look to the technical side of communications, but Brian is there talking about the community side. Uh, and, of course, he's done some weird and wacky things. He's also run um, classes in Asterisk, uh, amongst other open source technologies, at St. Joseph's uh, University, where he was a uh, senior person. I think he's possibly the chair of the computer studies uh, department there. Yeah, he, I think I first met him before I even discovered Asterisk, back in uh, in small footprint routers. Uh, right. And things like Open DSD, he had, he had done some work. Oh, and Open WRT, that kind of stuff? Yeah, that kind of stuff. But before there was anything like MonoWall or Open WRT or any of that stuff. Right. Uh, you know, back around the late late 90s, early early 2000s. And, uh, yeah, properly Chris, back in the day, Ken. Yeah. Yeah, I met Chris back then. He's a super smart guy. He's a super cool guy. So. Uh, yeah, we're, we're really pleased to uh, have him along. Um, and so, uh, and both of them actually, both uh, Dean from uh, the UK and Brian, are actually going to be there for the whole of Astricon. Uh, you know, sometimes keynote is kind of jet in and jet out. Uh, but I think they're both people that, uh, obviously, with uh, Brian, we know that, that have a, a level of interest and want to see some of the other stuff that's going on. Now, uh, I heard you say three keynotes. That's two. So who's the third? Ah, okay. Uh, no, well, we've got three days. Two main keynotes, but we, we tend to talk about the wrap-up session at the end uh, that's done by the Asterisk team. We call that the closing keynote these days. So that'll be people from the Asterisk team talking about what developments have taken place over recent months and also pointing to where the, the roadmap is going to lead in the future. Right. So it sounds like you guys have a pretty full schedule for... Pretty much the entire week, it sounds like. Yeah, and, and on, on top of all this, for the first time, we're introducing uh, an extra thing. I, I don't know whether you've come across this term in cricket in the UK. When people have a cricket match, at the end of it, they often identify the man of the match, you know, the guy that stood out in that cricket match. So I've come up with Geek of the Week for Astrocon. And so uh, we have moderators in each track, by the way, and uh, Brian has acted as a moderator before now, and I'm hoping he's going to do that again. Maybe, maybe if he's on the side here, he can come in and uh, and talk about his experiences uh, in a minute. Um, but the moderators are there in each track and there to keep the timetable uh, ship shape, make sure people start and finish on time, facilitate questions. But this time, the moderators are also going to be picking their favourite speaker, and then we'll, that will go through to a kind of uh, a short list, and then we will pick one speaker who will be the official Astricon Geek of the Week. Ah, that'll be cool. So, guys that are watching this that are going to go speak at Astricon, you better have your game on. That's right. We want people to bring their A game to Astricon. Yeah, definitely. That would uh, that would be uh, that'll be good to see uh, how that works out. So, uh, and who gets that this year? So I know you yes, guys yeah. have a ton of a ton of speakers coming. Uh, yeah, is, is there any other ones that are like big names that people might want to come out and see? Yeah, um, I can I can read a few. What I've done is I've just pulled up the draft show guide so I can uh, just mention a few. 
Um, uh, there's a talk called Machine Learning for Asterisk, Deep Speech and More by Evan McGee. From uh, Is he Ring Plus? Is that Evan, I think? Yeah, that, yeah but, uh, well, he's Evan. He's Bowtie Guy. <laughs> he, he is Bowtie Guy. That's right. In a, a previous Asterisk-on, uh, it got some thing that was looking for swear words uh, on a telephony channel and would light up a light. And so he was swearing at this light, trying to <laughs> cuss him a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, Evan the Bowtie Guy will definitely be there. Of course, the world-famous voice of Asterisk, and now voice of Free Switch, I believe, as well, Alison. Uh, will be there. She'll be talking about 10 things your callers will never tell you about your IVR. Um, Dan Jenkins, well, we also we all know Dan Jenkins, don't we? In fact, I have a, a mini Dan Jenkins claim to fame uh, that I introduced him to all of all of this, so it's my fault, really. So if you ever <laughs> want to blame somebody uh, for Dan Jenkins, you can do that. I, I met him when I went to deliver some Astris training at the place he was working at the time, and he showed me a little uh, shim layer he'd done between um, the Asterisk AMI and Node.js for some stuff he was doing. I said, that is the kind of thing you really ought to come to Asterisk on and talk about. Well, that was a few years ago, and he's been to been to everyone since, I think. And, uh, of course, now he's a, a ClueCon regular as well. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, and he's actually uh, come on here and hung, hung out with us talking about uh, – because he does some stuff – he does some cool stuff with uh, MIDI and JavaScript and WebRTC. So, yes, he's a bit of a web guy, isn't he, that Dan? I think he's a, a Google developer expert and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, he's sharp. You, should, you guys should yeah. check him out. Uh, other other uh, speakers, we've got Fred Posner, who I know is also a ClueCon regular. He'll be talking about Camellio and Asterisk for scalability and security. Uh, we've got Battle of the Platform as a Service World, a multi-million user case study by Nir Simeonovich. Sometimes I'll get that last name mixed up a little bit. Um, what else? Oh, Isabel. Now, there's an interesting thing. You remember the Elastics distribution that was based on Asterisk? Yes. Well, as you know, that kind of went off in a strange tangential direction, thanks to some commercial people. Um, but uh, some of the open source community in South America forked that off and created a project called Isabel. And so the Isabel guys are going to be there. Hopefully they'll be manning a table on the open source showcase but uh, Juan Pablo Bustos uh, who's one of them will be coming to talk about Isabel and that talk let me see if I can find it it's called Isabel stretching beyond elastics how about that for a title <laughs> that's a good title <laughs> it sure is um, let me just read a couple of others off for you um, oh, Wazo is another asterisk based distribution that's got French language support. And Mr. Sylvain Boilly will be talking about that. Um, building an IVR with .NET Core and Astonet.ari from a guy called Zachary Way. Uh, let's just go uh, a couple of others here. Porting Vichy Dial to asterisk 13 and AMI version 2 from Michael Cargyle. And uh, Jitsi, state-of-the-art video conferencing. You can self-host from our friend Saul, who uh, I think we're all aware of. He was at ClueCon as well this year. Yeah, so, yeah, the Jitsi guys tend to end up all over the place. <laughs> you they, never they know where they're going to run into them. Which is kind of ironic since they do video conferencing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the technology that's meant to kind of keep us all at home. <laughs> right, and then you, you just... They just pop into places and you see them. It's like, oh, hey, look, it's a meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so, yeah, yeah no, so no, no, there's a good lot of sessions to choose from over the three days, Ken. Yeah, no, it, it, it sounds like it. Uh, so uh, for uh, for people that haven't uh, made arrangements to go to Astrocon yet, can they still get in the door? Yeah, I mean, the first question is, what are you thinking? If you haven't been to Astrocon Pass just yet, you need to get and do that. But, yes, there is still time to do that. They can go to www.astricon.net and they can uh, book up. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Ken, especially for your viewers here. Don't tell anybody else. Uh, but let me give you a little discount code here. It's DD2. So that's <laughs> capital D, capital D2, DD2, uh, DD for David Duffett, and then the number two. Um, when you check out of your um, uh, online shopping thing when you go and get your Astricon pass that will give you a 20% discount off your pass if you haven't already got one and uh, we also have a thing called a diamond pass and that's for when people want to share the love and bring some colleagues 
So instead of saying, oh, boy, there's too many sessions, I can't go to them all, they can say, listen, you go that way, you go that way, I'll go that way, and then we'll compare notes afterwards. So that's called the Diamond Pass, and uh, we're, we look forward to welcoming everybody along. Yeah, that's cool. So everybody go check that out, and that was astrocon.net, right? That's what, but I'll, t- I'll tell you what, Ken, one of the key people we're missing is you, Ken. I think we're down to have Jerris. Uh, I think we're down to have Brian. We're down to have uh, Tony and the ladies. We we need a bit of Ken Rice in there as well, with some rice in the mix. <laughs> oh, that that might happen. It, I, I have been to Orlando before. <laughs> uh, well, that'd be good. It'd be great to see you down there. Yeah, no, uh, that's uh, that's something that may happen this year. I'm not quite sure at this point. Um, a lot of crazy stuff going on, so I hope to be able to make it um, down. But I can't. Tell you, I will be. If you do manage to find the time, just get in touch, Ken. I'll hook you up. I definitely will, David. Um, so, uh, you know, so there's a lot of open source people that are going to be down there. Um, and obviously, uh, while they're doing presentations, you really can't go bug them. Where can, uh, what do you guys have for people, you know, actually meeting up with some of these people and, you know, hanging out with them and talking about things? Yeah, uh, indeed. While so, on, on the first. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Ken. On the first night, the Sober Tuesday night, there's what we tend to refer to as the grand opening of the exhibition floor. And although, of course, you know, the, the main thing is there to see the exhibitors uh, who are part of the Asterisk ecosystem, there's ample space and there's drinks and eats served. So there's ample space for networking and, you know, people occasionally go off into little groups and talk about things. Um, of course, the, the other thing that happens, you can imagine with five separate tracks, there's a lot of kind of hallway between these different tracks. And so the, the, the phrase emerged, the hallway track. And that's where <laughs> people stick around out in the hallway and get chatting. And so there are, there are lots of opportunities. There's also um, uh, the dangerous demo session. Uh, now, the dangerous demo session, we try and focus on the dangerous demos, although we will serve drinks during that session just to help oil the wheels a little bit. Um, but after that, and after the um, end of the, the wrap-up session, the, the closing keynote, people also tend to stick around. So ac- across the three days, there are ample opportunities for people to uh, get together and talk. And sometimes people end up using the rooms that have been used for the sessions during the main part of the day. You know, they'll break off and go in and, you know, just gather around and have a little chat. There's also a very unofficial thing. Hold on. I have to have a little. There's an, an unofficial kind of wine-tasting event that sometimes goes on. All I can say about that is it's a bit unofficial, uh, but if you find me during the show, I can generally tell you where people are going to be hanging out for that. <laughs> yeah, so you guys, uh, if you're into wine tasting, go find David. You'll find him there. <laughs> He'll have an asterisk shirt on, kind of like the one he's yeah. got now. He's going to wear the same one. Well. And, and he told me he's going to wear the same one for all five days. <laughs> so he'll be eating his butt. But uh, you might want to close pin. <laughs> no, nah, he wouldn't actually do that. But... Uh, yeah, so no, no, that's 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 really cool. Uh, I know, uh, you know, half the thing of, about going to these conferences is not just seeing the tracks, um, as much as uh, you know. There's a lot of great information there, but it's also about getting to interact with the open source community and with the people that are working on the same things that you're working on. Exactly, can there, there can be nothing better than being able to discuss something some challenge that you might be facing with somebody that's maybe already done it or maybe got a different idea about it and uh, yeah that is one of the beauties of actually going to an event it's one thing to kind of watch videos of things afterwards you know you can get some information but it's not quite the same as actually being there and of course you know that very well from Clucon uh, as well as Astracon. Yeah no I mean it, and it's and it's where I mean even if you look at say like free switch or asterisk a lot of a lot of things that that we've done collectively as an open source community comes from these conferences. Um, you know, just getting there, sitting down, hanging out, hanging around, having a drink, and then somebody gets a crazy idea. And the next thing you know, somebody's implemented it. And yeah, that's right. I, I can tell you a, a strange little story about one of those that happened a couple of years ago. In fact, last time we were in Orlando during the DevCon, um, Tim Panton was there. I'm sure you've come across Tim, and uh, he was on about how we. He fancied kind of asterisk enabling some Bluetooth toothbrush they had come across. 
but he didn't really want to spend the money. And all of a sudden, there was a whip round in the DevCon, and we crowdfunded the purchase of a Bluetooth toothbrush, which he, he then integrated with Asterisk, so that if you happened to ring him while he was brushing his teeth, you got a different message <laughs> if you happened to ring him while he wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, what's, what's next? The uh, Bluetooth-enabled front door? Oh, wait, they already have those. <laughs> you know, no, it, it's uh, you know, it's all fun and games until somebody yells, hey, Alexa, turn my toothbrush off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and of course, uh, another asterisk on, this is going back a few years now, we did have David Troy, who asterisk-enabled a Roomba vacuum cleaner by kind of gluing... Uh, a Linksys router that got OpenWRT with Asterisk installed on it and using a kind of Wi-Fi phone. And he had uh, Alison recording some now infamous prompts about press one to start sucking and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> probably, probably less said about that, the better, actually. That's probably better. Yeah, but, you know, press one to go left, press two to go right would probably be more. All important. of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh... But yeah, so no, you never know what you're going to run into. I know we ran into some quite funny things over the years. Uh, I know, and, and dangerous demos. Uh, if you guys, uh, if you guys have never done dangerous demos, and you're going to Astrocon, oh, do you have a list, or you got? How do you guys get people to sign up for dangerous demos? Let me ask that question. Yeah, well, we, we or something they can go to yeah, ahead we, of time, or they find you. We try and do it ahead of time. Uh, in fact, we've even done like Google Hangouts and things with uh, James Bodie, the legendary Brit, and uh, get people to contact him ahead of time. But as you also know from your ClueCon experience, really, a lot of them are kind of press ganged into making these demos by James going around and collecting their names and threatening them and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so a lot of it happens during the time. But we have got some amazing prizes. Now, this is this is a maybe because I don't know whether it's been purchased, but I, I believe we might be giving away a, a top of the line Google Pixel phone as a dangerous demo prize, uh, amongst some other things. And in fact, this year the dangerous demos are sponsored by Greenfield Tech, which is Nears' organisation. So we've got a sponsor for dangerous demos. So there are even more prizes. I think we've got about four prizes, but I think that that, that Greenfield Tech are adding uh, another two or three prizes into the mix. So there's everything to play for. Yeah, and you never know what James Bodie is going to show up with for prizes. I know. That, he showed up right. Of course, he does have his little uh, laser glass thingies. In fact, I, I've been the recipient of one of those uh, very things at ClueCon. I don't know whether you remember, but I, I won a prize for most entertaining demo, a dangerous demo, at ClueCon a couple of years ago, which I was very humbled and honoured to receive. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's those awards are from uh, everyone that I can remember was well-deserved for anybody that got those. And James and his team of judges, they do a really good job of picking out the people for prizes. And uh, did uh, James tell you about the trouble that he had bringing the little trophies over? For no. No, I don't well, think. Apparently, they're leaded glass, so they just show up as a black blob right. on the airport scanners. So he got the extra special treatment from TSA coming to the States. <laughs> wow. I so. So, I, so he'll have those. Uh, and I know, uh, and you never know what other prizes that James is going to come up with. I know uh, uh, there was there was a drone or two given away at ClueCon for Dangerous Demos. So who knows what he's going to have uh, this year for Dangerous yeah, Demos. There's, there's, there's potentially three different sources of prizes. So, uh, there is a, a lot to play for. I, w I was suggesting a special prize uh, that I was going to call the Dan Jenkins Fellowship Award for the, the most things needlessly connected to Asterisk. Because <laughs> last year we kind of connected everything from a MIDI keyboard to a drone. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun, but I, I wasn't necessarily entirely sure why they're all there. But anyway, <laughs> I, I know Dan had his reasons. So I'm, yeah. I'm just well, uh, taking them. Yeah, well, that's some of the things for Dangerous Demos. I mean... I got funny looks by this past ClueCon when I did a dangerous demo of attempting to send a text message to everybody in the crowd at ClueCon. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you, you've hit on that another part of a dangerous demo, and that is the uh, the um, attempts that there normally are at hacking the scoring system. You know where the audience can text in or email in or whatever, 
people usually have a go at hacking that, and, and part of the excitement is, is seeing how badly it gets hacked. Uh, yes, and uh, we would never me mention uh, anybody named Alex um, that may have done that in the past. <laughs> yes, Alex the Kinch does have a slight rep in that department, doesn't he? Uh, he, he, he most certainly does. Uh, but I, I know um, I was actually quite impressed with uh, JB and Andy at uh, the last Dangerous Demos. They did a really good job of protecting the system against uh, boat stuffing somehow. Yes. Yeah, they did. And, of course, the other thing is uh, at ClueCon, uh, the last one uh, in Chicago just a few weeks ago, that was the first time you'd had a virtual Andy show up, wasn't it? Uh, that was the first time we had a virtual Andy show. He it was actually there for real uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, I don't know uh, if he's going to make it to Astrocon this year. I know JB will be there, but uh, they're staying. I'm, I'm, I, I hear they're staying really busy with their new venture that they have going on. Yes, yes, I think they are. I know we've got JB for sure. Not so sure about Andy, but I'm sure he'll be involved some way because they're a bit of a dynamic duo. The pair of them. Uh, yes, they are. Um, so. Uh, I mean, we've talked about like all kinds of stuff going on in Astrocon this year. Are we leaving anything out, David? Um, we've done the keynotes, haven't we? We've yeah. done the fact that there's five tracks. We've done the fact that there's those great workshops about Asterisk as an NFV and NVF by Life Madsen, Life Madsen and Doug Smith uh, on the Tuesday. We've got the introductory stuff. We know we've got the grand opening reception. Oh, one uh, other thing I should mention, and that is, as you know, there's a qualification for people that uh, take their asterisk seriously called the DCAP, the Digium Certified Asterisk Professional. And we generally try and look after them in a special way when they come to Astricon. So we usually have a, sometimes we've had a gift for them, a special gift. Other times we've had a little bit of a private reception just for them. Um, but people, when they, when you register for Astricon, you're asked whether you're DCAP. And if you are DCAP, you put in your DCAP number. And then you get that special treatment when you show up. So that's another dimension to it all. Right. Yeah, so definitely. So you guys be sure to put that in there. Um, now, uh, when it comes to DCAP, are you guys doing anything for DCAP training or testing or anything like that at Astrocon? Yeah, yeah. Ken, you, I tell you, you're bang on the money here, asking all the right questions. We do have a DCAP testing room available at Astrocon. So people, if they want to come, come and uh, try out for the DCAP, they're able to do that. Uh, that, that has to be booked up. It's not impromptu. You have to kind of book a slot to do that. And also, I believe we are having a week-long Asterisk Advanced class in Orlando after Astrocon. So it's not coincidental. It is afterwards because, of course, it's a full week of training, and so we don't want to distract people from Astrocon. But while people are there, we thought they might want to take advantage of that, rather like you guys do with the free switch training after ClueCon and, and Open Sips this year as well. Right. Yeah, so definitely. So, And they can find out all this information at astrocon.net. That is the place. Astrocon.net has got all of the information. Um, but people can see my email address down at the bottom, thanks to your uh, your signage there, Ken. So if anybody wants to get in touch, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. All right. And, uh, and if they do get questions in general about Asterisk, where do they go? Well, asterisk.org is a great place to start. Um, as Steve Sokol said a few years ago, we, we drastically improved astrocon.org by adding some content to it. <laughs> that, that has got a lot of really good stuff on there now. There are uh, kind of introductory videos. There are also um, links through to the wiki, and the wiki is excellent now. Um, very often, well, not, not so often these days, but I have been known to get in touch. One, one of the privileges I have is a kind of a direct line of access through to the Asterisk dev team, and I've been known to get in touch and ask questions, and they've been known to very gently and politely point me to the wiki where the exact question I was asking has been answered. So I've been slightly told off, but in a nice way on a, on a couple of occasions there. So, yeah, the wiki has got some great information. But asterisk.org is the place to start. Community.asterisk.org is where all the forums and uh, places for interchange are. So, yeah, wealth of information. Right. So, all right. So, I mean, I think we've covered everything under the sun. Is there any parting words you want to get in there, David? Well, what I'd like to say is see you all at Astrocon, uh, October 3rd to the 5th in Orlando. And uh, as I said, we're privileged to have the free switch people along, not only uh, at the Open Source Showcase, but also participating in the program as well. So definitely, guys, go check that out. 
And uh, David is going to, all the links that David and me have been talking about today will be posting below the video. But before we wrap things up, I see we got a few people out there. Does anybody have any questions for David before we let him uh, get on with uh, his evening there back in the UK? Because it's got to be, what, about 7 p.m. there, David? Yeah, just gone 7 p.m. here in the UK. Uh, I don't have a question, but we do have a quick correction. Um, Dan Jenkins would like everybody to know um, that he wanted to show you can do so much cool shit with the web. That is why he connected so many things. Uh, so just a quick correction there. Thank you, Thank you Dan. Much appreciated. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. So, uh, so David, I want to say thanks for coming out today. It's uh, been quite enjoyable. Uh, for, uh, we're going to be wrapping up the recorded segment of the program here. But if you guys want to hang out and chat with David for a minute, if he has time to hang out, you guys hang out with us, and uh, we'll move on to that part. part. Uh, so let me get this thing into wrap-up mode here. Guys, don't forget, uh, if you want to know what's coming up next on ClueCon, go to ClueCon.com or follow us on Twitter at ClueCon. Like us on Facebook. Uh, you can like us on Facebook uh, both at uh, ClueCon or uh, Free Switch. And you'll get all those social media posts that Kathleen and everybody else does. Uh, we've got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. I know we've got Flow Route coming up here. Uh, we've got all kinds of other people coming. Uh, they'll be joining us here every Wednesday at noon, U.S. Central Time. So do you guys come back and join us next week. Uh, don't forget, click that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you guys then. Thank you. You've been watching ClueCon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or visit us online. Please follow the FreeSwitch team on Twitter and Facebook by visiting our site at freeswitch.org.